Well, hello everyone. My name is Paranormal Video Gamer, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different than I am used to doing. I'm going to be doing a rant video on something I think that needs to be said, and what needs to be said is the future of gaming and gaming's greatest threat microtransactions. So, why am I against microtransactions? Well, three reasons. First off, for those of you who don't know what a microtransaction is, a microtransaction is where you go and buy extra stuff uh, that originally was included in the game but then was taken out because they kind of want you to pay more money for new skins, new armors, um, in many cases new characters, um, and they decided that they wanted to tear that out of the original game and make it as a microtransaction. So you spend more than just the initial base price, which is about $60 per game. Now, why do I have a problem with this? Because here's why. A lot of times when you have a microtransaction, okay, you're paying extra for something that was already, as I said, included in the game originally. So, you've paid $60 into that game. And the company comes along and says, Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. That $60 game, it's missing some stuff. Some really cool stuff. But you gotta pay us in order to unlock that cool stuff. This presents a very dangerous situation. Because the companies that do a lot of microtransactions, they're going to realize very quickly that gamers are going to get tired of spending 60 70 80 dollars on a base game and finding out that half the characters or half the items that were originally in the game are no longer there because now it's all microtransactioned. They're going to get very sick of it. We as gamers, we're going to get very, very sick of it very quickly. And it's going to come to the point where we're going to sit down and we're going to be like, you know what, I can only afford one, maybe two games, you know, in a six or eight month period. And we're going to be concentrating on those two, maybe three games. And that's it. It's going to be those three games for the full year. And then we're not going to buy any more games. Then this is going to make the... Video game companies go, wait a minute, these people aren't buying like they used to. We need to we need to maximize our profits. We're spending so much money on these games and people are not buying them for seventy, eighty dollars. Then they're gonna increase the microtransactions from five dollars to twenty dollars to thirty dollars to forty dollars to fifty dollars to sixty dollars and then it's gonna get to the point where by the next generation, if this keeps going up, my biggest fear is that when you go and buy a $60 base game, that $60 base game is no longer going to be an option. And now instead of paying $60, you are paying $80, and for an extra $100, you can buy all of the content that was removed from the game to unlock it. Or, let's say for example... And again, this is just an example. You buy that $60 game, you get to a certain point in the $60 game, let's say halfway through the level, and you can't go any further because the game developer has put in a code that when you get to 65% of the game, you have to buy a package, a microtransaction package, in order to progress. So you get to a certain point part of the game, Let's say, for example, there is a person on a water tower, and the only way that you can get to that person is if you uh, have enough materials to build a ramp in order to reach that person on the water tower. And you have to sneak up behind him on the water tower in order to get to him. But that microtransaction for all that stuff is an extra $60. Gaming companies are going to start doing this. They're going to keep doing it, and they're going to make it even worse. And it's going to get to the point where we all are going to be 
seriously buying maybe one game a year. And my biggest fear is that this reality is slowly and surely coming to a head. I don't think it's going to be this generation that, that takes it on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. But I do believe that if not by PlayStation 5, Xbox, whatever they've decided to come up with next, and Nintendo, um, I think that very well could be the case where um, when you buy a system, you pay $400, let's say, for a system in order for you to be able to progress in a game you have to spend a lot more money to be able to buy an unlock code and the only way you could do that is if you buy the base game and then you have to buy an unlock code which for me I'm sorry I will never not a million years buy a game and then find out later on that I have to buy extra just to be able to play the game the day that happens is the day that I am going to lose my mind. And I will probably <laughs> I will probably be very angry when I find out that uh, a certain game uh, has blocked me from progressing any further in the game uh, just because I refuse to pay an extra fee to unlock something new. And I understand games are expensive. They're not cheap to make. They're not cheap to produce. But there's different ways of maximizing a profit and not DLC or microtransactions. If you want to maximize your profit, you need to sell, in my opinion, that game at a higher mark. So it says, you know, saying, all right, we will give you everything that that game originally included, but let's say you pay $80. That, to me, would be fair, because, you know, yes, you're paying an extra $20 for the game, but you're getting everything unlocked on the game. What I cannot stand, and I've said this many times during a live stream, I cannot stand when a company puts skins for weapons that don't do anything. For example, um... Many of you probably don't know what the Evolve game was. The Evolve game was notorious for this, where uh, you looked into the game, you, you, you uh, got into the menu, and you realized that all these little tiny skins that they have for weapons don't do anything, but it costs two, three, even four dollars, and there was even one skin. This is a cosmetic skin. This does not do anything. It doesn't add any damage modifiers or anything to the weapon there was a skin that i saw on there for nine dollars and 99 cents and this is a weapon skin this is not a weapon that you get that makes you more powerful that has more ammo that you know does certain amounts of things uh that the other weapons don't do no this was a skin this was something that was cosmetic that just made the weapon look cool to me, that's what makes me mad more than anything as a gamer. When I have looked at this particular gun, and I'm thinking, oh, that's going to be cool. You go to select it, and you find out there's a microtransaction. You have to pay 2 or $3. Um, trying to get characters uh, for certain games. That's another one that kind of makes me a little mad, because, um, perfect example... Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat, they have this thing where you have to pay extra for extra characters that were originally planned to be in the game, but you have to actually pay for these extra characters to be a part of your game. To me, that just... I don't know. It just makes me feel like, you know what? Why can't they put them into the game and let what used to happen, and this, this is back in the day, you used to be able to play a game all the way through, and you used to be able to play that game all the way through, and play it, and play it, and play it, and then all of a sudden, when you got to a certain point, it would unlock a new character. And that would keep you going. And that would make you go, okay, hey, I unlocked this guy, I'm going to keep going, I want to see... Who else is in the package? Who else do I, who else can I get? And it would keep you going and going and going and going and going until you got every single character that was originally put supposed to be put in the game. Microtransactions have pretty much eliminated that. 
The other thing that, for me as a gamer, really sucks for the new generation coming up. I know some of you guys are young, and you guys don't understand. But one thing that really makes me mad is... When we were young, we used to have cheat codes in the actual games. Like, for example, you beat the game, you wanted to have fun with the game. You wanted to put in a cheat code and do something completely crazy. Infinite weapons. Your car doesn't blow up. Like in Grand Theft Auto. Like, uh, one of the early Grand Theft Autos that I remember is Grand Theft Auto 3. Um, you put in a cheat code... You could have a tank, you could drive around with a tank, a rhino tank, all over the city, and you're really invincible in this tank. And it was so much fun, because you could do so much damage in this little tiny tank, that it was just a lot of fun to do it. Cheat codes in video games nowadays uh, hardly exist. Yes, you do have some in Grand Theft Auto V, but there's not a lot. It's not like it was back in the day. You had 50, 100, 200 cheat codes in an actual video game. Nowadays, you don't have that. You've got maybe 18, 20, and half of them are not even that good. Half of them are just little tiny effects. Like, for example, Grand Theft Auto V. You get invincibility, but for five minutes. You get to jump with a bicycle, with moon gravity, but it only lasts 45 seconds, maybe two minutes at most. This is why gaming's greatest threat is microtransactions and cheats. Cheats are no longer being used. They're no longer on the edge of the gamer. Now it's all about how much money we can milk from the gaming community. Perfect example with this. Skyrim VR. Doom VR. Now they're putting it as, okay, well, let's, let's see what we can do. Let, let, let's make a VR on these certain games that were very popular and see who would be dumb enough to actually buy these games. Who is going to be dumb enough to actually sit there and shell out $80, $100, $200 for this game? I don't know about the majority of you, but I cannot and I will not buy a VR headset just for one or two games. To me, that does not necessitate the cost of having that. Like, another, put it in other words, I can't just own something for one or two games. If it were every month there would be a VR game coming out, then maybe, maybe, for the next two years, I would be picking up VR games and, and wanting to put and invest into a headset for VR. But I don't see that happening. I don't see VR being this huge thing that a lot of people thought it was going to be. I think it's impressive. I think it's really cool what they've been able to do with VR. But I think that VR is going to be one of those things where most people are not going to like it. And most people are not going to be able to afford it. When you have to pay $300 for a headset... And then you have to pay an additional $80 for a game. And then maybe, if you're lucky, you'll get a dozen uses out of that headset. And then you don't play it another game because there's nothing that really piques your interest. You've just wasted $200, $300 on a headset for that one game. And from what I understood, it's just not worth the money to buy a headset nowadays. I hope, and it is my hope, that you appreciate what I've tried to talk a little bit about here with transactions, cheats, and headsets. Uh, I hope you guys appreciated uh, you know, this particular rant 
I don't do them very often, but I felt like I needed to do it because I just I'm so tired of the microtransactions and the lack of cheats in games and you know uh, just overall stuff that has really bothered me recently with gaming. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Please feel free to put those opinions down below or hit up the Facebook page, hit up the uh, the Discord page, and let us know. Let me know what you think. I'm kind of curious. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and if you liked this rant, please hit that like button, and if you really, really loved it, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the little bell icon. It lets you know when I go live. Again, thank you very much. I'm Paranormal Video Gamer, and I'll catch you later.